Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! 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 Good morning, beautiful. Hey, sweetheart. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. No hat. This is... No, no hat. You have been abducted by aliens, and this is no, a fake. I, fake Dylan. I'm purposely not wearing a hat because I have a haircut in a few hours, and I don't want to have a hat hair when I go there. Okay, so here's the thing. First of all, cancel the haircut because you look like a million bucks. <laughs> I wouldn't, I would just cancel no, the fucking, I need, no. I need this cleaned up. No. I need no. this shortened. It doesn't no. fit my hat. No. It's getting too yeah. poofy and I need, I need to fucking cut quit it so my it. hat fits quit, my head. Quit fucking with it. Is this better? Uh, no. <laughs> hey, do you, so do you use any product in there? Because that could be part of your problem. Yeah, it's called man. No. So you need a little bit of, you know, a little bit of something after you shower. And then you won't have the poofy hat head problem. So look, yeah, cancel the haircut and I'll tell you what to go buy. And then you're good to go. You're good to go. You're good to go. I will not put product in my hair. Number one. (laughs) Number two. (laughs) Why? why? First of all, why? I feel naked as fuck right now without having my hat on. So why no product? Just let me know. Because you're too much of a man. You don't fuck with that shit. You don't fuck with product. Yeah, I don't fuck with that shit. No. (sighs) Ah, okay. I... I'm sorry because I know there's going to be people listening to this that are all fucking beard oils and all this other shit, but fuck that shit. Knock it off. Grow your beard like a man and stop putting oils in it. Why are you the way you are? Because <laughs> <laughs> I grew up. I grew up <laughs> in, in a different time. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you use shampoo? Yeah, of course. Okay, well, that's product. Well, so washing. in other words, your philosophy is like, don't use shampoo, bro. Like, you don't need That's that not, shit. I want to be clean. I don't want to smell like I came out of the fucking candle factory. No. Okay. Well, it's just, you know, part of life. Do you, you know, do you, if your hands are dry, do you use hand lotion? No. Why? Why not? Why not? Just I want to hear why not. Just to, please, <laughs> please tell know. me. Just tell me the why. Worst. I want to get off of this topic. I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So I was sort of resistant to this kind of stuff too, but you know, then you mature and you get married, and you're like, "Hey, hands dry," and then your wife goes, "Here, <laughs> like here's some lotion. Just rub them in." You're like, "Oh, works." simple Mm -hmm. it's simple no yeah good oh boy um anyway we're recording at fucking 8 30 in the morning that's fun um for you for me it's 7 30 i got up at 5 30 for this bullshit it's gross um here's something that has just happened here sure kong i thought i'd share with you and it's upsetting you ready sure for the story Mm -hmm. So we have a part or we have a a piece of equipment that needs a part. It's our eco rinse, our developer. And there's a, uh, so a pipe fitting broke. And then we were trying to fix the pipe fitting. And then we broke a different, another part. Super bummer, right? Because we had the fitting. You broke another part. What is going on behind you, by the way? Is your lamp freaking out? It's fucking in the, I'm partying, bro. It's. It's okay. it's that time and that's all I that, wanted to know. The time of day. Look at that though. It has. Mm-hmm. We're having power surges. Um, where was pipe. I? Oh, you fixed the pipe and the, another part broke. Yeah, I'm sure you've done that where you're like replacing a part and then you break another part, mm-hmm. um, accidentally or whatever. Maybe it was already, you know, weak and then you, you broke that part and so that part wasn't local. We had to overnight it from MNR. We call, you know, it was a Friday that this happened and so we're like, okay. Overnight it and we chose first delivery and we get here. In fact, Kyle got here at like six, I don't know what it was, 20 or 15, something like that. And 
then no part is here. I got here at something like a little after that. No part, no part yet, right? So they look it up and it was attempted delivery at 6.08 a.m. And then they said, they didn't leave any sticker like they normally do on the door that says, hey, we attempted delivery, we'll, we'll see you later or anything. Instead, we found out by you know tracking it and then it says on the tracking thing, next attempt tomorrow. Now, WTH. Is it UPS? Yeah. Yeah. Call the and hub I, and they'll send the driver back to you. Do you think? I hope because they will. You know, they do that we, for us all the time. Yeah. But you live in fucking, you know, wherever. I, I can't remember where you live. So you live somewhere. It's small. Yeah. But you're, you're good enough of a customer probably where if you call mm -hmm. them and just say, Hey, I need this part. It's for a machine or my production's down today. They'll, they'll send the they don't driver care. back to you. They don't care. They don't care. Maybe. I, I, I have know. our, our daily drive, like our ground drivers. Uh, cell phone number and we tried calling yeah. he, has, he didn't answer yet but i don't think it's on his truck i think it's like a different no truck. do you have the actual hub like your local hubs number? no no they don't they don't we don't have that shit there's they like no local out. there's like uh three million people in st louis metro i understand but they there's gotta care. be like a ups hub that's close to you yeah i the think there is but it's like the size of up. size of a city you know it's they don't care I wish well, I lived in a small town. Trust then me, you're like fucked. they, they, you know everybody by name. They're like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll come, we'll swing by, you know, on our horse. Which is and, funny. And, which is funny because we used to deliver. We used to drop off at the UPS hub a lot of nights because we had mm -hmm. to stay late back before, you know, whatever. And I mean, yeah, it still happens. But there's a, there's always like the ten people working when we get there that like know us. You know what I mean? No. Like I, I walk right through the UPS bays, like where they park the trucks, and I like carry a box, put it on the conveyor belt. They like know me and they wave and all that stuff. Yeah, you don't have I that. I dream. I dream. <laughs> no. no. You have the guy who knows you and just says, back her in every time. <laughs> I wish. Like mm. that's, I think, part of the problem with our world. Our modern world is we've gotten too far away from that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we need, um, I'm definitely, when I retire, I'm definitely moving to a smaller city, a small town, you know, much smaller. So I can... Well, um, you know, no people by name and, um, mm -hmm. you know, no traffic, like one, suck on, there's, suck not on even, dog. there's not even a stop light. It's just like a stop sign or maybe it's a flashing red or something. I live in a village. <laughs> that's, I love it. Yeah. That's what I want. Mm. What I want. What's going on up in, uh, Whitney Point? It's actually a beautiful day. It's been raining for the past four days straight. Um, took the kids to Kalahari this weekend, which is like a fun, like water park resort thing. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was cool. This weekend and maybe even a few days before I have been doing a bunch of gardening. I know I'm proud and of you. And they, I have been like the flower whisperer or something. You know what I mean? Like that's me right now. Yeah. I have a green thumb. Is that what they say? Mm -hmm. Because I um, I planted all sorts of things at our house first. That was the, our house got it first. And then um, here at the Kong, I, you know, there's, we have these two giant flower pots out front that were just nothing. There's just dirt from the winter. And I got some geraniums. They're beautiful. That's They're pink and um, very colorful and vibrant and when you walk up to our, our shop and you get me to come in you you're you know you, there's a smile on your face right there's a smile on your face and then when you're leaving there was a smile on your face and so you remember mm -hmm. Kong as a as a happy place and so yeah we have i did that on friday and then even this weekend i did more i did more um it's addicting planning i know it's fun it's like it's very like uh it's life you know Mm -hmm. and which is why i like doing yard work i like that kind of thing mm -hmm. it's like an all, i know you like, like on a bigger scale i know you like to make fun of me uh for not cutting my own grass and all of that stuff but remember when i was in I my know. 30s Describe, like you are scrappy like, lad i had um i was like a, a landscaping stud you know, I think they called it. That's what they called me around right, the neighborhood. That's what they called it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and I, 
like I, um, I cut all the grass, man. Like I was cutting grass, you know, when I was, I could just barely walk. I was cutting grass, but then I cut grass in my house. I bought a writer, um, a very awesome writer and I took care of it. It still exists. My kid has it now. He inherited it. It was handed down past through the generations. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I had, um, what are those called? Weed eaters. Yeah. Whackers. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Come in. Oh, come on. Who is it? Yeah. Just leave it on Brian's desk. Go scan it. Yeah. yeah. UPS. You got, did you get my part? It was, it was your package. Fuck. You're, mm. you're, you're right there. They really treat you good up there. I'll ship it out to you. It'll probably get to you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. That's true. It could. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why they. They have airplanes and stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, what was I saying? Um, oh, yeah. I used to do all of that stuff. And so, in fact, I was telling a story to somebody here, how I made the huge mistake of one time, um, I think under our deck, I, I, I wanted to put a bunch of rock because, you know, I was tired of mulch or grass and all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to rock all this. And so I had them dump rock in my driveway which was the biggest mistake I've ever made because it was literally like 50 wheelbarrow full of like riverbed rock or something that I had to shovel, which was thousands of tons. Shoveling rock is the worst. It was awful. Like I, the, after my third wheelbarrow load, I was like, I like, made a big this. mistake. Mm -hmm. I made a, I made a huge mistake. I fucked up. Yeah. And so I was committed though. Like at that point I was like, okay. And it was backbreaking. I had lots of stone delivered at the house once because we did French trains around the house. And mm. luckily I had, a, I had like a, I don't even know what it's called. It's just like a, like a mini excavator, basically. Mm. Like just like scooping walk it up and or? taking it. No, just like in a machine and just like picking it up and putting it all around the house. Because if I had to do that with a wheelbarrow, I would have shot And shovel. Away. Yeah, like it was, it was intense. It would took me. More than all weekend, like it was a, it was a big, huge thing. And, um, I was like, okay, don't, don't ever do that again, Andy. So I, I guess my point is, it's like, I used to do that stuff and I used to do it. I was right there with you, but I'll tell you this, there now will you're come just a day, flowers. there will come a day where you're like, all right, fuck that. I'm done. Like I'm done with the, the, the mowing and the landscaping. I'm just let somebody else do it. You know why? Because you run out of time and you want to focus on other things and so that was that was my reasoning behind i want to this. tell the other things to fuck off and i want to have my own time in my yard by myself and that's okay yeah you can do that but also remember this you don't cut grass in st louis and in st louis there's what they call 1000 percent humidity you're basically walking in, in water and it's 100 and so mm -hmm. it's no fun like the fun Not is here taken out of it yeah so where you are it's actually it's pleasant nice. outside yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly so for <laughs> some um, st louis has uh, a couple of months where it's nice like yesterday it was 89 that's disgusting yesterday here it, was like 35 yeah it's april so i think it's right. supposed to be 55 here today i would rather much rather have it have oh my gosh we are running behind <laughs> That's right. It all starts with a screen and whether it's new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. To find out more, go to graphicscreenfashion.com, F F F F F rank.com or great fucking screens.com. The best fucking screens. .com. <laughs> Cleaning screens is no fun, but easy way makes it way more fun or their line of eco-friendly chemicals will make reclaiming screens a whole a lot easier. Check them out at easyway.com. Easyway. It's easy sway, baby. Graphics is the source for production ready digital art and remote art staffing. We use them every single day. Learn more at graphxsource.com or 1-900-hotstuff.com. That's right. Uh, next, we have choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated, and that's why we love Chromaline. Go to chromaline.com to watch Kev's vids or Contact him on Instagram at the Emulsion Guru and get the answers you love. Mm. Just like pure warmth. Sounds good. SNS has been our go to source since day one. They have eight distribution centers, which allows them to ship to 41 states in one day. Get yourself an inside or 
outside rep or both at ssactivewear.com. I just I think about just... when I have to order stuff and it's just so, it's so much better. Mm hmm. Agreed. What we got today, bud? Dylan, this morning we are chatting with Steve Paulson from Short Batch Printing Company, who is from the future. Down under. The future down under. The future down under? Yeah, he's it's it's Tuesday. That sounds like a sick sci-fi movie. The future down under. That does. Well, hmm. whoever is if if there are any um writers or directors listening right now, then it's like in Back to the Future when Doc Brown says Great Scott, he's gonna say like Croy. That's right. We need to ask him about is it how do you say it? Vegemite? Is that no? How do you say that? Yeah, that's gross as fuck. He's gonna love it. Here's the question. Here's the question. Do you still have some of that shit in your refrigerator? You said you did. Yeah, I make all the new people eat it. <laughs> it's because it's like three years old. So it's older than that. Yeah. <laughs> I, does it go bad? It has to. Like, it was it, bad when we got it. Well, he's here apparently, but he's not. So what's going on? Because he's too far in the future. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's got a beam. Oh, here we go. I, I feel like okay. Look at that. There he is. Look at that. Boys. Look at that handsome man. <laughs> Thank you. What's going on? <laughs> Not too much. It's early. It's sleepy time. Early. Well, depending on what time it is. It's early. We were just yeah. <laughs> uh, talking um, about the fact that Dylan has Vegemite in his refrigerator from three years ago, opened like it's been opened. Okay. And yeah. then when when you your first day at Upstate, you have to eat some of it. <laughs> okay, initiation. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It can't get. It couldn't possibly get worse than it already is. Might get so better. I, I mean, I, worse. It's disgusting. It's, it's gross. Liquid it's, gold. It's like fucking road tar. <laughs> like black gold, Texas tea. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's good, man. Sure, sure it is. Get around it. Mm -hmm. So what's going on, dude? How are you? What time is it there? Uh, nine o'clock on the dot p.m. So um, yeah, just chilling at the shop, catching nice. up on some emails, doing nice. a few quotes. Yeah, that's sweet. How about you guys? Early, hey, nine a.m. or something. Yeah, Andy got it up earlier than I did, but it's uh, yeah, it's nine a.m. for me. It's not bad. Like we're, you know, we're starting the day off right. It's a beautiful sunny day and we're having a conversation with you. I don't have a hat on, so I feel vulnerable and naked. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it looks it's good. Thanks. It's coming I'm in actually big. going to get it cut and Andy's yelling at me for getting it cut. No, I'll leave it going. Mm. Get a fade. Get a cool yeah. fade. Get a sick fade like that, like you? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I don't know if I can pull it off. I'm not that guy. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So what's new, man? How's the shop? It's good, dude. It's good. Oh, before we get started, happy belated birthday. Happy 200. Thank you, oh, man. Thank you very much. I got iced tea here. It's good. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's all right. You guys look good for 200. <clears throat> I know. And he doesn't look a day over 50. <laughs> <laughs> that's a day over, he doesn't look like a day over 35. <laughs> I'll take the day over 50. I would love to be 49. Yeah, that those were the days. Those were the days. Glory days. <laughs> uh-huh. How's uh how's business there? Is it the same as here as far as you're just starting to ramp back up? Yeah, yeah, it feels that way. The past like four weeks have been really, really crazy, like light switch sort of thing. So we get a bit of a slow. January, which I think everyone does, just the start of the new year kind of slows down. But um, yeah, the last few weeks have been crazy. Just heaps of um, heaps of like really big orders, you know. Normally it's just kind of like bread and butter work. It gets you through, and then you rely on those couple of big ones to kind of really put you up. And um, so, yeah, we had a, had a whole bunch of them come through really quickly, so it's been good. 
two things, two observations. One, you just said it's like bread and butter work. And I, I feel like you should have said bread and Vegemite because that's more bread and Vegemite work. like bread and butter like, uh, is America. <laughs> and yeah. don't, don't, don't steal that. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing is, is that it's interesting that, you know, you also have a slow January, which means it must be maybe it's tied to the holidays because aren't you coming mm. into your uh, fall or winter? I mean, what season is it? There? Yeah, it's te technically it's just come into autumn. So, but you wouldn't think it. It's been nothing but like 30 degrees. I don't, I went to write down like a cheat sheet for conversions, mm. um, <laughs> but you can look it up when you, <laughs> but 30, yeah, it's been 30 Celsius. Celsius, yeah, yeah. It's mm. been beautiful, sunny spring sort of weather. So, okay. But, um, funny enough, I say that a lot. Like on Friday, we had like a torrential rain for here, but that was like a freak afternoon and then it disappeared. But yeah, it's been really beautiful, really, really nice. So, it's probably going to start to turn, I think, in the next sort of couple of weeks to start getting that kind of gloomy autumn weather. But yeah, you're exactly right. It's just like people are in post-holiday mode, chilling. I don't know. It's just everyone kind of takes it easy and then decides they need to all of a sudden do you guys, for events. <clears throat> do you guys feel like this is a, because I feel like this is a thing I've been chasing for forever and I don't know if I should just give up on it or not. But I feel like every year in the fall, I'm, I'm dreading knowing that it's going to start slowing down in the winter and every year i'm like i really got to get those dream clients that just order a shit ton in the winter time so that we yeah. never have that slow season do you guys feel like that's an achievable thing do you feel like that's something that's doable or do you feel like that's just us printers like trying like chasing our tail basically like yeah always you're always kind of chasing your tail to that extent you know like but Obviously, winter becomes opportunity for hoodies, becomes hoodie season. So technically, it doesn't really stop. It just changes. Instead of printing shirts, all of a sudden, people want hoodies instead of tees. Or they kind of order both, you know, which is which is also good. Like, we usually have a pretty strong winter because they order hoodies, but they know they also want the tees to go with them. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a two for one in a, in a way. Very rarely does someone come through and go, oh, we only want goods, unless they're like a regular and they have heaps of teas already. If it's right. for like an, an event or just kind of a promo or something like that, they'll get the teas and goods as part of a bit of a combo. Yeah. I mean, we'll have that for sure. It's just, I mean, it's always like the January, February, early March thing where I always think I'm going to have somebody or some client that's like, Oh, we're, we're busy during that time to where it would, you know, take the edge off where mm -hmm. you, I just don't know. I feel like every friend, every person I ever talk to, it's always the same. We're always in the same boat. And it's like, why, what is the actual reason why people aren't ordering January, February, March? Yeah. You, I think you know it's what I mean? just, like, yeah. Holiday kind of hangover. People just take a couple of weeks or a few weeks to for just us, kind of get back I, in the swing of things, yeah. For us, I think it's a combination of, like you said, holiday where a lot of people, maybe they're traveling um, or they're taking some time off. But also, you know, a lot of people spend a chunk of money, you know, for the holidays. And so then the holidays are over and then they don't have as much money. Um, I, I've thought of this before. And I, and maybe even it came up on uh, the show. I'm not sure. But, you know, one thing you could do is discount any customers that you may have in, let's say, March or April and say, hey, you know, it's January and we're slow now. If you were to place your order here in January, well, then we'll give you 10 percent off or 20 percent off or whatever that is. But the problem I yeah. have with that is first is, is that you're discounting. And so that's no good, right? You're discounting your work, which yeah. we, we try to never do. And then the second problem is, sure. is that you are then taking work, an order that they would order in March and April and then moving it to January. Does that mean that they're not going to order in March and April? And so then maybe you'll be slow then, you know, so it's sort of like, um, I don't know if that's a good strategy you almost need to sort of what dylan said is find that person or that company or that customer 
that actually needs their stuff in January. But I would say to that, like, good luck, because who who is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if it's fucking real. Like, I feel like every year I think about it. I'm like, yeah, like this client says they're busy in the wintertime and, you know, they're whatever. And I'm like, oh, sweet. This is going to be like that miracle client that's just like super busy in January and February. But I feel like it doesn't exist. I feel like it's not real. And we need to just come to terms. We need to sit right here right now and be like, OK, this is just what it is and calm down. And it, it, it's just get used to it so we could close yeah. we from um the week from christmas i guess we could close our doors reopen february one that's mm -hmm. a big break it's a big break it's a huge break yeah well, why bother why even bother why even bother just, show you <laughs> just save our money all year so we can pay all, all of our staff the entire month of january yeah yeah well, we we obviously kind of the upper side uh opposite side of the scale where it's summer, so it's beautiful event weather. So we get a lot of ramp up pre-Christmas because they know we shut down for that week or two, but they might have events over New Year's and things like that, and it's nice, beautiful weather, so everyone's doing the events. So even come January, even though it's a little bit slower, there's still heaps of events because, like you were saying, it's school holidays, general holidays. People might take a little bit more time and they sort of need the, the governments for events over that break. Yeah. So it's kind of real festival season at the moment. And then now getting into the cooler weather, it'll kind of start to slow down a little bit just with the event side of things. But then you get the other guys that just always need stuff. You know, I, think, I, th I think I've got it. Um, your your company's name is Short Batch, which means um, I'm guessing you only print under 25. So you you print in very short batches or maybe under under 10. And so when your customers order like a thousand, you can just say, sorry, we, we only print 10 at a time. <laughs> and we're going to do that. We're going to do that all January. Over, uh, all January, split it out. That's sort of a bad idea. We can use that. We get that a lot. That's kind of how it started was yeah funny enough we found that real hole in the market when we first set up that a lot of people weren't doing anything under 25 or 30 so we kind of named the business after that but it's kind of bitten us in the foot a little bit because we get all the the crumb work you know the hey can i get a photo on a shirt kind of thing and they think we just do one-offs which isn't really the case but um right. yeah I mean, you'd be stupid to refuse an order for a thousand, no matter which way it comes, right? Yeah. But I, I like, I like the mantra. If um, <laughs> if we're a little bit slow and someone comes in hot, we can just sort of dial it back a bit and stretch it over a week or something. Uh, maybe it's or a of it's super profitable to give them all that ten piece pricing <laughs> too, instead of a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's also true. Yeah. Yeah. You for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that would agree. Do you still have that mentality though? Like, is that kind of your place in the market? Is you like doing the smaller piece orders and helping people out with that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're, we're always super helpful. Um, I've always been helpful. I come from a real strong customer service background. So even if physically we're not going to do it here, we can just sub it to DTG. We don't have DTG in house or we do the DTF. So there's always kind of avenues and you often find once you give them the pricing, we'll, instead of just giving them the price for 10, we'll give them the price for 10, 20, 30, 50. Then most of the time they look at it and go, well, why not get 20? And they kind of reevaluate it and think, well, you know, if it's for uniforms or whatever, each person, you know, say they've got like whatever, even if they've got five staff, they're probably going to want sort of, you know, three, four shirts for the week. No one's just going to order one shirt and wear it a week if it's like hospital staff. So they're all of a sudden, like, they think they want 10, but you kind of just coach them into just sort of upselling the, the 20, the 30, and you just don't get that look in unless you're willing to get that get an email and give it the time of yeah. day and it is hard sometimes you know like you just feel like you just waste some days just dealing with nothing but crud but like it's just part and parcel of it you just do it it's part of the job 
Yeah. We were having a discussion the other day and uh, we have marketing meetings here now. And uh, one of the things I kept trying to drill in a little bit was just like be a normal, regular person, but use your knowledge of like this industry and what we see every day for your for your clients. Just be like, hey, like like you said, like it might be a construction place or whatever. And they're not thinking they're just like, oh, you know, we're new and we need like a shirt per person or whatever. You could be like, hey, like you're going to need at least like four or five shirts. Like I'm not trying to sell you. You can get whatever the fuck you want. But like, yeah. realistically, you probably need at least like four shirts, maybe five per employee so that if they get it dirty, they can wash it unless you want everyone mm. walking around in a dirty ass shirt all day because yeah. they have to wear it multiple days in a row. Like it's For stuff sure. like that. And like also like, like I said, there's a lot of things you can add to that of like, all right, well, do you want a giant white Plastisol logo on the back of your shirt if you're going to be out in the sun all day and like all these other things to add? So I don't know. I just feel like with all of these different size orders and whatever, it's just like, just be real with these people. Like, don't stop at whatever they say they want. Like give them your two cents to a degree. Yeah. Like 100%. if they come in and they're like, I want 50 shirts, I want this design, whatever. Like if you see a thing in this where you could help them or you see a flaw where you're like, I just don't want them to be like, all right, it is what it is. This is what they said they wanted. We just send it out the door. Cause then we're just another teacher printer. Like I'd rather be like, hey, this is our advice because we do this. We love printing T-shirts. We know all about it. Let us help you. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the time, even if they're not expecting it, they'll appreciate that advice. And you, mm -hmm. like you said, you just turn around and go, hey, do what you want. But right, yeah. you can totally, you can totally do whatever you want. I'm just saying that this is what I would recommend, and if you, you could take it or leave it, you know, I would just, yeah, exactly. I would just yeah. rather put that information out there. We used yeah, to, uh, place, yeah. Dylan, you've, you've been to, uh, this restaurant, Katie's pizza and pasta with me. Well, there was, you've been to uh, the location that's by our house. They used to be, have another look. Well, they still do. They have another location. That's a little more like midtown ish. And that's where we used to go. And, uh, Joe and I, we, we tend to like sit at the bar because it gets so crowded and, you know, you don't get a table, but you can go up to the bar. It's like first come first serve and you find a bar seat. Well, we used to go there. And there was this bartender. In fact, he was voted best bartender in St. Louis uh, for like three years in a row. But um, the very first time we went there, we, you know, um, said, OK, you yeah, know, we want uh, like I can't remember what it was, but we said something like we want a pepperoni pizza. And he goes, no, you don't. And we we're like, oh, OK. And he goes, no, you want the you want the mac and lobster. So he would like put in your order, <laughs> like just put it in. And that was what would come. And uh, we got to know him. He became a friend, actually. Um, and, uh, it's sort of like what you were saying, like he works there, he knows the restaurant, he knows what's good and what tastes good on, you know, like pizza and everything else. And so he advised on, um, you know, like your, your order, <laughs> it sounds yeah. weird because you're like, what if I don't like that? But he would just tell yeah. you, you know, and he would or tell like you, me where you have a seafood allergy and it would like <laughs> oh. it would destroy me. I know, I know. I, that's what, I like that's just like. <laughs> That's what he did. So, yeah, I think um, so. I guess the, the lesson there is, is that, yes, take, you know, offer or like offer suggestions and, you know, like our opinion. We do that a lot here, uh, but sometimes they don't hear it. You know, they don't, you know, even though you're the expert and you can say, well, hey, you're not going to like, you know, that giant print on the back of your shirt while you're out cutting grass. It's going to be hot. But like, oh, yeah, it's fine. This is what I want. And, you know, you just have to go with what they want. Jo um, Joanna and I were saying that. What was it? We were saying how awful it is to sometimes, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. We were driving by this brand new house they were building. Brand new. It looked like a $2 million house. And we were driving by it and it was hideous. Like it was just a mess. I don't know. You could tell like the the people that were having it built put in their two cents. Like they're maybe they put in the whole dollar or whatever it is. And they were like, yeah, we want this. We want this. And the builder had to do it. You know, he probably said, hey, you know, you probably don't want that. And they're like, no, we do. We do. And so it's sort of like printing shirts. We do that sometimes where it's on. It's coming on the dryer and we're like, oh, gosh, you know, look away. Yeah. But you have to do it because that's what they want. Yeah. And we told them it was going to be bad, but they they don't want to listen sometimes, you know. No, that's right. Yeah. You can lead the horse to water, you know, but sometimes you just got to. Yeah. You just got to <laughs> do it. It just doesn't end up on the gram, right? You just do it. Get it done get paid move on i've been i've been i say reading but i've been listening to this book this simon Sinek book it's like uh what i can't remember what it's called now it, start, it starts with why or something like that 
And uh, it's funny when you when you hear him talk about all this stuff, it's kind of like so many people do it backwards. He calls it the golden circle or whatever, where, uh, you know, the outside is kind of like what you do. And I feel like most printers do that. Like if somebody comes to them, that's a client or whatever, and like, oh, tell me about yourself. The first thing you say is, oh, we're a, we, we print T-shirts and we, you know, we're quality printers. And everyone says the same shit. Like everybody has the same, oh, we use quality products. We do this and quality and customer service and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, why do you do, why did you start printing t-shirts? Like, why do you do what you do kind of thing? And it's like, that's where I want to show these people that the reason why we print t-shirts is because we fucking love t-shirts. Like we love screen printing. Like I love making art. I love printing cool shit on t-shirts. Like that's why we do what we do. So it's kind of like our passion here is like, making something really cool and not just like printing something and putting it out the door. Like we've all talked about how there's different business models and different printers and everything else. And there are people who just want to crank shirts out, make money, go home. But like our core values here, I think are that we just want to print the best shirt and like the coolest designs. And like, we want to print them the best way that we can. So I feel like it's, it has to happen. Like it has to happen that we talk to the client and be like, the method that we could use to print this the best is this not just like oh we'll take your design we'll print plastic we'll print it on a shirt send it out like i'd rather be like hey this is a big print there's a lot of detail in here why don't we do a discharge on your base with a plastic on top or why don't we just uh, do this in water base or oh this design would look really cool if these parts were puff or if it was printed on a 1717 versus a guild in 5000 or something you know what i mean like we yeah, need to give them sure. some advice like they don't yeah, know. Definitely. And yeah, we were talking about this right. the other day, too, is there's so many people that work for all these big companies we try to print for that. It's just it's a line item on their day of like order shirts, like their focus for their job isn't just ordering blanks or ordering goods. It's like yeah. they just are like, fuck, the boss wants me to order shirts today. And like they they can call and say, hey, I want this design on this shirt. Send it out. But in reality, it's like, hey, wouldn't it look better to your boss if you got like the best fucking shirts you guys have ever gotten? And like yeah. they actually want to wear these. So it's really making me want to reevaluate things here to where it's like, hey, let's just use what we know to all these people and just stop trying to take orders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, let's actually like make it a studio or a craft or something of like people come here because we help them through the process, not yeah. just print their shit. Does that um, give you a bit of a complex when, you know, you know, like you said, you enjoy the craft, you love doing the printing, and then, you know, it's a lot easier doing the DTF, even though, you, you know, you love doing the screen printing side of things. Is there, I think you guys have talked about it before, where you've got like lines in the sand, but, you know, if you get under that line all day, every day, all of a sudden you're not kind of printing anything because they're all just falling into that DTF category. And then, you know, the printers might get a little bummed or you're not really creating that or you kind of lost that bit of spark and interest that, you know, you started the whole thing for. Is that kind of every now and then do you sort of look at something and go, you know what, this is probably technically DTF, but we haven't done one of these in a while. Let's set that and, you know, see how we go printing it just for a bit of a challenge and give the guys something else to do. Yeah. I have an answer. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Andy's yeah. just staring at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have I have an answer too. Mine's very short. You could change your name to Long Batch, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> long Batch. Um, I'd have to do a couple of adult films if I start going Long Batch, I think. <laughs> that's, that's probably the best plan. <laughs> I think that just printing in general, and I say printing in a general term of like just making t-shirts or making whatever apparel or whatever we're doing is there's a, there's a lot of different ways to get the same result as far as the end result for the customer is they got their art on a shirt and they're happy with it and it, it looks like it should and all this other stuff. So I think that screen printing is awesome. I love the art of it. I do love, 
I do love DTG. I do love DTF. I love all these things. I love hybrid, whatever, as long as we can make rad shit on it. Like I've seen cool product from all of these things. Like, yeah, some aren't printing and some of the quality is a little lesser than other things, but they all make really cool things when you boil it down to it. There are cheats, there are printers or there are people that are trying to use these things just because it's easier and quicker and all this other stuff. But there are cool results like we've done DTF things where we're like, this is like straight up exactly what we wanted. It's like it's like Steven with all this stuff for like sports people. And it's like it's literally the player with like, you know, basketballs and all this other stuff. And it's like it looks like it should. You know what I mean? Like you could technically screen print this, but the amount of work and time and playing around with it and all this other stuff to get it to look exactly the way that you want it. Like it's this guy's exact face. Like that is definitely a digital product. Like it would be best and repeatability and everything if it was a digital product. And it's like putting that out and making it look amazing for that person is my number one goal. And if I know we could screen print this, but we're going to have all these challenges, like I would rather go the route that's going to look the best for the customer rather than what I think my screen print religion is, you know what I mean? Like I just want to make the customer stoked on the artwork they gave us. Mm -hmm. So my answer to that is I don't really necessarily care what the tool is. I just care that the customer is stoked on the end product. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And ultimately that, sorry, Andy, that keeps them coming back, right? Like as long as they're happy, might not be a hundred percent what you love, but like you said, if it looks good and you guys are happy with it, nothing really goes out of here. I'm sure you guys are the same unless we're a hundred percent happy with it. So yeah, at the end of the day, if it looks good, then it's a win, right? And they'll come back. So, right. Yeah. I think that's a great answer. Um, If I were to add anything to that, I would say that I think it's important to zoom out and take a like a 30,000 foot view of your business, because at the end of the day, that's what we that's what we have. You know, we have a business and I think we have to be careful about um, putting our personal views or opinions or beliefs in into into the shop, because Ultimately, you know, we have to make a profit here. Otherwise, we're going to close down. And I think if you look at it and you you take a hard look at, like you you said, there's a there's a line in the sand and at, at, you know, under a certain amount, we're going to move to DTF or DTG and over a certain amount, we screen print. And I think that, sure, maybe I'm a purist and like I love screen printing and I like screen printing more than DTF and DTG. I don't hate that other stuff and it's okay. And if I'm going to exist as a business and continue to exist as a business, I have to acknowledge that there are like better methods than screen printing on certain things. And so I'm I'm thousand percent okay with um, those options. And I think that if, I think that it would be irresponsible um, of us as founders and owners to ignore that stuff. And I think that there are lots of companies that are bankrupt that have done just that. And so I, I, I don't know, that's my answer. <laughs> I'm going to real quick, I'm not going to mention the names of these companies, but there's friends that I talked to that have this thing going on where basically, and it, it was really cool to me because there's, there's designers and brands that have like amazing art, like super complicated, but amazing art. And they have to basically, if they wanted to do the screen printing route, they have to do bigger batches and long, long batch. Sorry. Um, and that's not always possible and that's not always feasible, especially if they have a massive catalog of all these designs that they've ever put out. Well, they came up with a solution because the technology is there basically where they can open up the, they can open up their entire catalog of every print they've ever done or every design they've ever done for people who didn't get a chance to buy it back when it came out. And to me, that's like a perfect digital solution. Like now anybody can go and get that art that they love from this designer, but they didn't have the chance to get it because they can get a one-off, you know, and it's, to me, that alone is worth it because of the fact that like 
now that customer, which is me, like I literally want to take advantage of this from this designer because there's designs I didn't get a chance to get and now I can get it and I'm happy. Like ultimately me as the customer is happy because I have the ability to get this shirt. So it's, it's stuff like that where it's like, we need to set our shit aside and be like, Hey, like yeah, the end product is what I'm looking for. And I'm stoked on it regardless of the print method, because you know, the technology is there. It's not like I'm going to get this shirt and be like, what is this fucking garbage? I mean, sometimes, yeah. but you know, that depends yeah. on the person who's making it. And I know that the people making this are not putting out garbage. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited That's for good. that. You know, it's, yeah. We all need to we need to work together and realize what it is we're actually trying to do here. You know, that's that's yeah, long and short of it. I think yeah, you, you said it best where you just put it aside and as much as you're a purist or whatever. You um like a certain tea though, right? How do you go about getting a blank that isn't your fit? Yeah. See that's that's where I Well if you know the if you know the printer, you can just tell them, hey, just put through an order. This one I feel <laughs> I feel so bougie when I do that because I always ask all these people, I'm like, I would love to support you and I would love to buy this shirt, but is there any way I can send you my own blank? Because <laughs> no other blank's gonna fit me and I'm not gonna like it. So <laughs> for sure. I feel, like Andy, I feel like Andy when I say that. Like I feel like <laughs> you know. You gotta stay at a few more Ripsy hotels before you yeah. sleep. Right? <laughs> That's true. But yeah, how many times have you been to a concert and you know you want to support the band and out of all my sufferance you just buy a dog shit to sort of tea or a hoodie, knowing you know it's not what you're after, but you know you just do it anyway. I've a hundred hundred thousand percent done that. And yeah. it sucks too because you you spend full price whatever it is thirty bucks or something on a t shirt, and you get it home like, just you're like oh maybe this once this shirt will fit me, yeah. And then I get it back <laughs> it and I, as soon as I get back I put it on and the neck is like way out here, <laughs> or it's like fucking painted on and I'm like wow this is what my body looks like and then I just never I just put it in the closet and I never wear it. <laughs> oh, it's good plenty of drawers full of teas like that yeah but you just can't tend to throw them away mm -hmm. at what point something. at what point do, do we change because i remember in high school and college and even in my early 20s i would go to a show and i'd buy the shirt and i didn't care like i whatever the shirt was i put it on and i wore it and i loved it and i never even for mm -hmm. a second thought oh i i don't know if i like the fit or the material or anything like that i didn't even care i didn't even know if the print was crooked or even what method they used it was like that was the shirt thank god i have it it's awesome and it, and it works you know all of a sudden we become bougie i guess i don't i'm not trying to do, old, old and fat i was <laughs> I gonna say 100 percent, dude 100 percent, and i'm not trying to shame anybody or anything <laughs> it's 100 <No>, percent <laughs> because you've never been a fat kid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I used to fit into, I remember sometimes I'd get away with a small and that seems like an eternity ago, but that was like you said, painted on and it was very, very tight, but it was a lot skinnier. So right. even like now, technically a large, but I like the more oversized fit. So I could just get into a medium now. I lost a bit of weight. So thankfully <laughs> I could fit back into a medium, but yeah, the small seems like a real distant memory now. That would like fit on my arm. Yeah. <laughs> like a small t-shirt is like, I think, th I think that's the thing though, is like when you're a bigger person, it's very important to have something that you feel comfortable in because yeah. a, like for me, I'm all torso. So a, I have two things against me. One, I'm large, I'm a large person. I'm all torso. So it's like, if I get a shirt that is, fits up here but it's too short then belly's hanging out or if it's too big up here then it's got big arms and it's like it goes like past my crotch like i just feel like i'm wearing a blanket with a hole in it <laughs> like, 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 what's up, like, right like i need to find that one that's a sweet spot where like if i lift my arms my stomach's not hanging out or you know like it's not like suction to my body and i feel like i'm wearing a plastic bag so yeah anything that's like ring spun like fashion fit 100 percent out the window for me i can't wear it 
Yeah. I think, I think my point was that as we um, become adults, we, uh, maybe we become more picky because, you know, like when you were kids, you didn't care what the weather was outside so much. You would still go outside, but I would play yeah, outside if it were cold saying. or if it was hot, if it was rainy or snowy, yeah. it doesn't matter. I'm going outside and playing. It's fun. And Very I don't true. even, your mom would tell you to put a coat on. You're like, I don't need a coat. What are you talking about? And it was like snowing. Yeah. You didn't care. And so my, my point is like, I've worn, I've been the same size and I've worn size small when it was cool. And I've worn size two X when it was cool. I was like, no, I only buy two X. And so it's like, <laughs> I think fashion changes and you just kind of go with it. And I've gone uh, to shows. Funny, and <clears throat> It's funny that you bring this up. Cause I was literally thinking about this this morning because my daughter is very, um, she's like getting into like fashion y kind of things for like wearing to school. Like she's, we went to that resort and she picked out these like, um, it was basically a full outfit and it's the first time I've ever seen her like really care that much. And, uh, she was like, yeah, I want this like cropped, uh, hoodie with these like, you know, sweat short things and like all this other stuff. And she was very like, this is what I want to wear. And my son doesn't give a fuck. Like he wakes <laughs> up in the morning and just literally like, I think he does it with his eyes closed. He's like <laughs> yeah. t-shirt, hoodie, socks, pants. And he just puts it on. He always walks out every morning and, he showers generally before he goes to the bed. So every morning he wakes up, he walks out and gets ready to put his shoes on for school. His hair is like sticking up in all directions. It's totally fucked. And I'm like, dude, come here. And I like wet my hand and I like pat down his hair and fix his hair. And all you, you, lick, you lick like, I lick my hand, hands yeah. and, and I just like I, I mat it down. Um, but it's just like. I was thinking about that this morning of like, am I because I definitely see kids like this, too, where it's like oversized hoodie because he's not a big kid at all and he likes an xl hoodie and i'm like he's probably more of a medium in all honesty and he wears an xl but he's wearing yeah. like this morning he was wearing like adidas track pants he had an extra large hoodie on and like i had to mat his hair down and like i was just like is this the look like is this yeah. what kids like wearing the school right now or is he just the fucking schlep <laughs> because then I was thinking about it. I'm like, hey, what, do do I be that dad that's just like, have some respect for yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, like wear clothes that fit and like, but then again, like, is that a dick thing to do? Or is that like a responsible parent thing to do to be like, be I think you dad. should wear jeans and a t-shirt and a hoodie if you need it. But like shit that actually fits you. Yeah, That's what I, I mean. Like, do you hands yeah. off the whole time or are you just kind of like. If that's what his friends are wearing, obviously that's what's going to happen. Are you guys noticing a trend with that, the oversized fit at the moment? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're getting that a bit here too, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, heaps of oversized stuff, more boxy stuff, for sure. Yeah. So maybe it's just a fashion thing at the moment. Yeah, Christina sent me something the other day that was, she, she noticed that Vans had like a, um, like a, more fashiony line or like an upscaled line of, and like you know the clothing and everything else that they have and she sent me one and she's like this is hideous and it was a t-shirt but it was like super baggy super boxy and like every seam like the on the shirt sleeves and on the collar and everything were all super fat and i was like and i showed her i told her i was like my first instinct when i saw that was like it looks like a cartoon shirt you know what I mean? It looks like like a yeah. cartoon character wearing a shirt. And the first thing it reminded me of was Ed, Ed and Eddie, that cartoon. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen it. Um, yeah, a little bit. But like they just have these like oversized T-shirts on and everything is yeah. super like, you know, like just, it's like if it, it's yeah. like if a 10 year old drew a T-shirt yeah. like that's what it looked sure. like. 100%. Yeah. It seems to be a bit of a trend here as well. Yeah. Getting it oversized and. We go to the extent where now it's not oversized enough and we'll relabel tees one up or even two up sometimes. Um, so, you know, it'll be like they want to XL and we're selling them technically a 2XL and they're relabeling it as an XL or even a 3XL. Oh, really? And I haven't the, seen that at all. Yeah, on the label, we'll just change it. And then you're getting a really oversized cut because, um, yeah, I mean, unless you're getting, like, custom manufacture, there's kind of only a couple of guys doing real boxy oversized fits, right? Hmm. 
So AS Color have got some heavyweight stuff at the moment, which is generally a little bit oversized. But sometimes, depending on the kit, it's not oversized enough. So they want to go like one up again and then we'll just, you know, pick the tag and re relabel it and then make it sort of sell it that, that way, which is a good little tip for anyone wanting to sell oversized seeds, just relabel it. Yeah, that's crazy. I haven't even thought of doing that. Yeah. I have uh I have an observation and I'd like to hear your guys uh y'all's opinion on it. So I don't think it's fair to blame other generations for like my generation's problems. And so like for to say, like example, oh, the boomers, you know, you know, it's their fault. Um, this we inherited, you know, the this these problems or whatever. What's a, what's or, a boomer, Andy? <laughs> I, it's not me. <laughs> but uh, uh, I I think that, you know, the boomers inherited, you know, their situation from the generation before. And I think every generation sort of looks at the the younger generation is like, oh, you know, they're they've got problems or they're lazy. And so I I, I hear it a lot where um, I'm a Gen X. And so my wife is barely a millennial. And 1981 is the cutoff and she was born in 81. So she's a millennial. And, you know, you hear a lot of people say millennials are lazy or Gen Z, you know, they're even lazier. But Ooh. I just don't think that's fair. And I think that it's lazy to blame other generations on being lazy. I think that, you know, there it's always existed that there are people who have lots of energy and do work and or do things, not necessarily work. And there there always exists the people who don't do as much. And so I think that um, I think that we're divisive enough as people on this planet, whether it's, you know, race and sex or um I don't know. Um, you know, you like you're from this country or that country, and we already hate you for all of those other reasons. Let's say, you know, why we have to have generation also as part of it. And so I think that um, it's just an observation. I, I don't like hearing that, you know, this generation uh, has this problem or this generation has that problem. And so when it comes to, you know, people at your shop, I have found that across the generations, because we have a diverse, you know, age group that, you know, um, there's there's plenty of people. In fact, there's, I don't know what the newest generation's called, but I don't even know if they're of age to work yet, but the youngest generation, let's say, the youngest person here um, is has like all the energy in the world. Like they could work harder, twice as much as me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, um, it's just an observation. What do you guys, what do you find at your shops or what do you, how, how do you feel about that? Especially Australia. I mean, maybe it's totally different down there. I don't know, I'm just curious cultural difference yeah no you 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 do raise a good point that it's very easy to just turn around and go oh my generation's the best and you know it's not like it used to be and you guys are all different and it's very easy to point a finger um i do agree that yeah some are some are better than others for sure but ultimately yeah it comes i think it comes down to the individual because you can have, like you said, a really, really young kid, energetic, excited, and he does wonders, you know. And then you get the same sort of batch. It might even be his friends, like his same friends in his year, and they're just yeah. absolute drop kicks. And it's the same, like with my age group, you know, even when we were a little bit younger and working, there would always be some that were outstanding and willing to work and or if they found that passion, like we're talking about screen printing, like mm. if you like them and they genuinely like it, they'll instantly be a lot better than the kid who really Good point. You know. That's a really good point. So it's kind of just trying to find what they like. And fortunately, we have a small team here, so we don't have to really deal with too much of that. But I understand your, your problem where you've got so many different people and so many different roles but just finding what they enjoy. Like no one likes cleaning screens. You've got to start doing it. But, you know, if they show a bit of enthusiasm, you know, promote them up or ask them what they really like, maybe they just like doing screens all day. Maybe they're tapped in the head and just like enjoying 
doing that day in, day out, just, you know, just chilling out, headphones on, clean screens in a dark room. It's almost like a gaming room. Maybe, maybe that's the, maybe we've got to hire gamers and just say, hey, we come in this room, we'll put some neons around, mm. get some neon lights going, make it dark and just go, hey, play with this pressure hose all day long. <laughs> yeah, pretend you're killing aliens or something. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, I do I do agree to to what you're saying, Andy there. But yeah, just trying to focus on what you can see them enjoying or what they don't enjoy and trying to move them around, I think is a pivotal part of A keeping them on and B keeping them interested and then all of a sudden they might realise they actually do like it. It's not just a job anymore. And I'll just see up because, you know, mum dropped them off and they got a hand in a resume and get the job. They all of a sudden see a future in it or they see the craft or appreciate the craft. But mm-hmm. I don't want to sound like a simple man again. Apparently that's the that's the uh thing for this episode is still as a simple man. But I hate when people label themselves like that like i hate when it's i never think about it i never ever think about it i'm never like well that person's a millennial or this person's a whatever like i just don't i don't care and i feel like it's also again not trying to hurt anybody's feelings but it's like when people are like oh i'm not that way because i'm a pisces or whatever it's like dude Mm. that has nothing to do with you as a human being like you're Mm. just a fucking person and you grew up a certain way you're offending and a lot of people right now. I don't care. I, I, I don't care that. at all. Like at all. Like that. roll the fuck up. <laughs> the moon has nothing to do with you as a person. Like just fucking be a normal person. So Unless you pop fish or something. Then it yeah. has a lot to and do it's just like I don't know. I just think that people grow up a certain way. It has to do with how they were brought up and it has to their drive has to do with their surroundings. And I think that mm. I grew up a certain way, you know, I had to struggle to get to where I am and I, you know, didn't have a lot of money and now I treat money a certain way and I do the things that I do because I don't want to go back to certain ways and things that I did that made me feel a certain way. I think that's the case for everybody. You know what I mean? Like if you grew up where, and that's what I'm super fearful of because now I feel like I have some money and I have some responsibility or whatever. And I kind of like spoil my my kids and I don't want my kids to grow up now thinking they don't have to work for anything because they got a lot of things handed to them. So I'm terrified of that. And I think that's what's going to happen is, you know, like I said, like my son or whatever, it's like he never wants to get out of bed in the morning. And it's like, hey, come on, we got to go. And he's like, I just don't feel like going to school today. I'm like, how many times have I had to have the conversation with him of like, when you grow up and when you leave school, you're going to have to get up at a certain time and you're going to have to get ready and you're going to have to get to work on time. Cause if you don't, they're going to fire you and you're going to be fucking homeless. Like maybe, maybe it has a lot to do with what Steve said. And that is something that you're passionate about. And I don't blame him because I didn't love school. You know, like there were days that I would wake up and like, man, I don't want to go to school because a lot of times school is miserable. You know, it's, um, you have to, you're, you're stuck learning stuff you don't really care about. But if school was, you know, Hey, we're going to, we're going to learn about how you do something he's really passionate about. He'd be like up the crack of dawn showered with his extra large hoodie and his Adidas pants and his, um, Crocs or whatever he, you know. Now I feel that. I feel yeah. like I've just been trashing my son this episode. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be licking, his, <laughs> licking his own hair. Doing his That's own right. Hair. I think I think that's what it is. And I think it's just generational, like what's important to the people now. You know what I mean? Like my son and my daughter and all these, they're what's important to them now is social stuff and technology because they have it. You know what I mean? We didn't necessarily have that when we were kids. And that's why, you know, it was important for the generation before that to like everything was work with their hands because that was how they got ahead. That's what they were excited about. That's how they got things going in their career and everything else. And I think, yeah, I think that's like you said, like we just need to whatever generation these people that work here or in life or whatever is, I almost just did this with my hat that I don't have (laughs) um, is to just get them in the position that they're excited about. There you go. Right there. And so maybe that is that um, one of our um, 
jobs, I guess, as, you know, leaders of the company is sort of like we're a coach. And so, you know, if I have somebody playing first base and they just absolutely hate first base and they just wish they were playing in shortstop or whatever it is, and they dread it and they just kind of mope around and they're lazy at first base. But if I move them over to shortstop, they're stoked and they show up on time and they're really excited about their, they're not lazy at all. In other words, then it's my, I'm the failure. Like I was, I failed as a coach to put them in the right spot. And unless I'm yeah. checking in and finding out and noticing the fact that, Hey, I noticed, you know, that you're, you're you don't enjoy your, your, the spot or whatever, what can we do here? You know, and maybe it, it is true. Maybe that individual is lazy and no matter where you put them, it's going to, yeah. they're going to be terrible. So you move more to shortstop and they still suck. You're like, all right, now you got to go to work somewhere else. So like a, you're not cut Get out, for, you know, a, a t-shirt shop. And so I think you figure it out eventually and you yeah. build your team and you put your, you try to put them in the best position um, that they're most likely to succeed. And sometimes that may take a bit because maybe you don't have a, that spot open, but the minute that mm -hmm. opens up, you know, you move them over there. And so like right now I've got somebody that we're rotating because they, they were at the dryer for a whole year. They spent a lot of time, they paid their dues and they did great. And um, they're reliable, all these things, and they have interest in the press. And so now they're splitting time. I'm getting, I'm getting that person certified as a press assistant. And that takes a minute, you know, you have to spend 30 days on press. And so they're going week on and then week off and week on, they're kind of trading with the other quality control person. And eventually they're going to have, um, you know, be certified to be on press, which is a win-win because maybe somebody's sick one day and they can, they can fill in that role. They're cross-trained in other words. And so I think that it's our job as, um, you know, leaders and coaches, I guess, to, to put the team, put the right person in the right spot. Maybe, maybe that's part Yeah, of that's it. right. Yeah, definitely. Something. Sorry, go ahead. I just want to say something real quick to all of this mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. me again saying simple man stuff is just like, I just don't like when there's these labels on a person. Like, I feel like if it's I'm a I'm a this, I'm a Gen X, I'm a millennial or whatever. There's there's a label that comes with that of like Andy was saying, like they say millennials are lazy and all this other stuff. And me saying the thing about the horoscopes or whatever, whatever. I just don't <laughs> like when <clears throat> I just don't like when you say, OK, I'm a Libra that Libras act this way and people use that as a crutch of like, well, I can't change or do anything different mm. because this is who I am. I'm labeled this. I'm a millennial. Yeah. I'm a Libra. I'm a whatever. And it's like, I just don't like that. I don't think that people do have the ability to change. They do have the ability to dis discover new things. I've discovered a lot about myself in the last couple of years that changed me as a person. And I just like when you get to intermingle with other people in society or you get to do other projects or do other things and realize, oh, I do like this. I am into this. I can change. I can be a softer man and not a hard, stern, grumpy, whatever. And I feel like I was that for a long time. And now I feel like, oh, I, I can talk about feelings. I can do this thing. I can whatever. So I didn't want to just sound like whatever. I just wanted to make sure that my feeling towards those things is because I don't like when people get Put in a box and they can't be something else so yeah, again definitely. i feel like yeah. you could bring in a millennial and he could have this attitude or she could have this attitude that they're this kind of way but you could show them like you could get them interested in being on press or doing this other thing or whatever they yeah. just need to, you need to show them that it's cool and it's interesting and it's you know something else and they might change as a person or get more motivated or whatever like i said if we can put someone in a position where they're excited to go to work then that's going to open up their whole life that they're going to be excited for new things. So I think yeah, it's definitely. Important. Yeah. Like finding, finding what that is, is sometimes hard and sometimes they don't know it. Right. And you're kind of like, well, what are you into? And they give you that. I don't know. You know? And it's just like, you got to just, sometimes you like Andy was saying, you've got to put them through a diff few different roles before right. all of a sudden they just find that one and it might not even be printing. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's DTF. Maybe they like sending their headphones on, pressing DTF. Like, you just don't know until you start moving around and getting a little bit more interested. And But also, I think, like you said, Dylan, like coaching them a little bit and giving them a bit more reward and also making it look a little bit enticing and just say, hey, why don't we try this today instead of just getting like a 
struck upon answer. Again, like we, we don't have to deal with that a lot here, being a very small crew. Um, you know, everyone wears a lot of hats, but you know, it, at some points you've got to move around and you might not like what you're doing, but at least it's not kind of forever and eventually you can go back to doing what you like doing. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. So it is time for a screen print GPT question. And have you so, tried this yet, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, we have. Oh, Stephen, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I get Steve. that occasionally. Steve. I get that occasionally, and when I hear it, it's like I'm just like a. I give almost like a half look. <laughs> oh, that's I'm just wrong. so used to. I'm just so used to saying Stephen now because of Eric. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is he a? Is he a PH Stephen? Uh, he no. Uh, uh-uh, he's no. S T E V E N. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you have a question uh, that you want to ask screen print GPT or do you want um, us to use our stock question? You don't have to. We have one at the ready. That's all right. We looked at it. Um, we have been using this a little bit for a few things, to be honest. Mm. It's really, really cool. Matt's done an awesome job getting this together and how good a uh, response is getting on board and donating heaps to, to keep it free. Um, I was thinking about it today. I wanted to raise a contentious topic and ask it if it knows whether pushing or pulling mm-hmm. is the better option. Maybe pushing we get it to... Def- is pushing or pulling the squeegee? Yeah. Or is pushing or pulling the proper way to use the squeegee? I don't know how you would word that. So how about is pushing or pulling a manual squeegee? Um, or how about does? I would say which is which is correct, pushing or pulling a squeegee. Or which Still yields it. best result? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to get a lot of... Well, we all know what's pulling. Hate so. mail. Well, exactly. But some people don't. So let's let the technology... <laughs> it's right or wrong. I don't know if I worded this well, right, but the, the short answer is pulling because then you're actually using the correct durometer of the squeegee. If you're pushing, you're not using the durometer at all. You're just using a sharp edge. Uh oh, here we go. I bet it, I bet it, I bet it says pushing. <laughs> if it does, that's what's wrong. If it says pushing, we got to quickly delete it. We can edit it out. Check and edit it out. We'll ask you a question. It won't go there. All right. You want me to read this, Andy? Yeah. Can you can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Let me bring it closer. Okay. So the question was, which yields the best result, pushing or pulling a manual squeegee? Uh, screen print GPT says, oh, this is a nice one. Uh, the choice between pushing or pulling a manual squeegee and screen printing depends on several factors, including the type of ink used, the screen tension, and personal preference. Uh, First one, pushing the squeegee generally requires less physical force and can offer more control over the angle and pressure, making it easier for some printers, especially beginners. This technique tends to deposit a thinner layer of ink and often preferred for detailed or fine line work. Pulling the squeegee, on the other hand, is the traditional method and is favored by many experienced screen printers. <laughs> it allows for a heavier ink deposit, which can be beneficial for certain types of prints requiring more opacity or a thicker ink layer. Ultimately, the best method may vary based on the specific requirements of the print job and the printer's comfort and experience with each technique. Experimentation with both methods is often recommended to determine which yields the best results for you. Come on. It didn't give us a, I guess. I reckon he's tweaked it. That was too yeah. safe. I reckon he's going in. It's too, too safe. safe. It's way too safe. I he's do. Going in and I do think it's safe <laughs> to say it's not giving us a specific because it is telling us that pushing is giving you a thinner deposit with more detail and pulling is giving you a thicker deposit and more opacity. So I feel I like you could achieve print, I feel right? like you could achieve both of those by pulling if you were 
tweaking and not just doing the same method and the same pole and the same angle every time. Yeah, well, that's that's a good point. It didn't say you could layer a thick deposit by pushing. I mean, that's the best part about manual printing is that you can change things on the fly as you're printing it. You know what I mean? You can push down harder. You can change the angle. You can do all those things. So I don't know. I'm not manually printing, so I'm not going to say one or the other. I've always pulled my entire life with any time I've printed. So I've never pushed a squeegee. Like, in all it's honesty, a, I've done it before just to try it, but I've never done it in a production. Yeah, I think maybe I've done it. Maybe I've done it once. When I first started, it just felt so awkward. But to be fair, Bowie was super awkward, so both were probably fun. It's really, <laughs> probably <laughs> great regardless. So that's probably not a good uh, case study to go off. Mm -hmm. But there must be a reason the auto's pulling, right? I have seen a lot of people push, and I've seen good results. Like, I've seen yeah. their prints look good, and it's whatever. Just changing so, the setup. Yeah. So I'm not knocking either. I just, I don't know. I'm just going by what's the I guess. Um, I guess maybe Screen Print GPT um, was... I don't know, being a little bit like you and not wanting to label anything like it didn't want to, you know, put a label on a um, a type of a type of print. Answer. Yeah. So it was like, look, you know, you be you like you Thanks, do Andy. you. You're 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 putting me in a box now. If the, this is <laughs> this is what Dylan does. I like it. Dylan, though. I like GBT. that label. I like the label of just people just being genuine human beings. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that have been great if we plugged in that question and it just said, you do you. That's you all. I, would love that. <laughs> I would love it so much. Matt needs I'm to change it. I'm surprised he didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he changed it. He changed it to a safe answer. So he could have. That's what he should have done for April Fool's is every answer to every question <laughs> was you do you. <laughs> you do you. Oh, you. oh, you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Proud of you. I say that a lot around here. I say <laughs> you're doing great. Um, we walk. In fact, we have a sign in our break room. That, 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 that neon sign. You're doing that, great. Yeah. says live laugh yeah. love <laughs> nope no no nope does that make um, it a little less genuine Andy? no it's you know it it's, it's, it's real catchphrase. like i think the people need to um remember that like that um you know you're doing great you showed up to work that's that's actually doing great right yeah, there. that's true that's step one yeah it's a good point yeah that's step one it's um, something i don't do enough tell the guys right. they're good but a bit like you dylan you just turn around and go when they do a good friend, can't let them know it's too good, right? Yeah. You got to you know, say. Because you got a good relationship with them. You give them a hard time. Like, eh, it's all right. I do no, that. I, I've, I've seen better. I do that all the time here. And it's funny. Like I say it to my dad constantly. He just knows it's out of love and everyone here does too. But like they'll, they'll show me something that they're proud of. You can tell they're like excited to show me. And I'll be like, wow, this really looks like shit. Like what did you do wrong here or something? And it's just yeah, well, you it's go, my first you go. <laughs> instinct to say, and like my dad, he'll I'll show up and he's like built this thing in the shop, or you know, we just put a whole thing together, and I'll be like, I'll be like, looks like shit, tear it down, and start over. It's like my <laughs> go-to first thing to say, and I, I don't know if that's if that's a bad thing or or not. I guess it depends on the person, but yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's good banter, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it is time for over under. So, um, I have three things here and you just let me know if you think it's overrated, underrated, or properly rated. I was looking something up just really fast. Cause Say Vegemite. To see. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do. Why not? So well, yeah, you, number one. you liked it. Yeah, exactly. Underrated. Well, how do you eat it? How, how do you personally eat it? It's it's all about the it's all about how much you put on. That's like, what it's, I was not say, like, it's, it's not like it's not like Nutella, like, right? Well, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like in America we get these things like jam and Nutella and yeah, you just you know butter and everything, and we just slather, slather the fuck of it. Yeah, like it's rendering a wall. No, right. you you lather the butter and then just a little bit of veggie oil. It's just that little Try bit thin hot. Hot butter. Of it. Still bad. Hot toast, okay. warm butter. <laughs> I'll have my new hire try that next time. Warm butter, <laughs> Vegemite, that's three years old. That's it. 
<laughs> but I'm not even sure. I'm not sure. It's like bomb shelter food. I'm pretty sure that that's what I that's what it. I thought. Is it right. doesn't matter. It's just it's <laughs> it's good till the end of time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you'll be you'll be desperate one day, and you'll be sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be you'll be sitting there going, man, I'm so hungry. And then you'll reach for it and you'll love it. And then I'll I'll carry it to the trash can and drop it in. <laughs> and they just dropped it. I am going with nothing. properly rated. I think everybody knows that. Um, I guess if you either you either love it or you hate it. So properly rated. That's a Matt GPT answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right in the <laughs> that middle. That is safe. That is safe. You're right. Number two is gardening. 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 Yeah. Under underrated. The most you, underrated. Andy's going to say overrated. No, 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 no. I've, I, we had He's before. getting back into it. Yeah. Before no way. we came on, I was like Mr. Gardner. Yeah. Show me your hands. Uh, Lift up your palms. Uh, under you the, don't I have just, dirt under your fingernails. I just you got dirt on your head. Just cut my nails this morning. Just cut my nails this morning. How convenient. Um, <laughs> no, um, no joke. I did. I've been doing a lot of, it's very special you know, much spring here in St. Louis. And so um, I did a lot of not not gardening in like uh, vegetables, although I want to um, just flowers, planting a lot of flowers lately. Nice. So yeah. I think and I'm being completely honest, I think it is so good for the soul mm-hmm. to be outside, do gardening or yard work or whatever, because you're you're outside, the sun is shining, it's fresh air, you're to yourself, you're thinking about life, you're thinking about the the aesthetics, you're thinking about just things that that brighten your day. But also, mentally, it's a huge thing too, because it's a task you can accomplish and finish right mm-hmm. then and there. It's like mowing the lawn. It's kind of like, I know I'm going to do this task and I'm I'm literally going to finish it in an hour or two hours or whatever. And I can stand back and look at it and be like, I accomplished this today. And it's something like, you know, just little things like that, that you can do every day, make it feel like you, you just did something like you accomplished something regardless. You like, I have a habit of doing that, like coming home from work and being like, I didn't do a goddamn thing all day today. You know what I mean? Like you were kind of in and out of projects, you were walking around, whatever. But in reality, it's like, no, you did a bunch of things. But, you know, Christina tells me that all the time. She's like, no, you did this. Like you accomplished this. You did this thing. And it's like, yeah, you're right. I did. But like, I feel like gardening is one of those things like, Andy, you fucking planted these flowers. Those flowers Mm -hmm. didn't exist before. And now they're in pots at your house or in front of the shop or whatever. And they're done. And like you said, people walk in and they can see these beautiful things and smile and then walk out and see these beautiful things and smile. And I think it, it's it's important. And I think it's very underrated. Excellent answer. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. And I it's it's also very grounding. You know, you're touching dirt Literally. and earth. And yeah, so um, it feels good. I think we all agree. Sounds like uh, a real uh, millennial Oh, what is it? Gen, Gen I think grounding, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Take my shoes isn't that, off. Mm. Isn't that the yeah. new thing? It is. And I think we all can learn from the next generation. I mean, I, I do I just, appreciate it. The truth of it is, I just want to be a hobbit. I want to take my shoes off, walk around, let <laughs> my hairy feet air out, and I want to walk through Middle Earth. That's all I want to yeah. do. <laughs> Number three is Sharpies. So yesterday, I needed to get some brand new Sharpies and they had to be extra sharp Sharpies uh, because the ones we had weren't going to work. And unfortunately, I made my first purchase at CVS because I was already there and I'm like, screw it. I'll just get these two Sharpies for like way overpriced two Sharpies. I just need them. It was convenience. I'll pay the fee. And I bought it. And then like uh, and unknowingly, I ended up at Target like an hour later and they were there for like way, way less, like tw- like a third less or whatever it was. So I bought those two Sharpies. And then um, luckily we have a CVS on the corner right by our house. And so I that's where I got it. And so I re- actually went in and returned 
um the other <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very gen x thing of you to do <laughs> very much. And, what I like, two or three bucks. <laughs> no no it was more than that and a gen a gen wire uh helped me at the at the register and he was really nice he was a very good worker he said he just took care of me i didn't have my receipt because i had purchased it at the self-checkout at rcvs and it asked me if i want a receipt i said no because i hate receipts and also it's green i don't want paper and so I was like, hey, man, I don't have my receipt. I can stick my card in there. And he knew from the transaction. He just took care of it. And he was very polite. And he was like 20 years old, maybe. He's probably in high school. Did he help you to your car afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> help you cross the road? No, 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 no. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, I think uh, Sharpies are very underrated. I love them. I'm going to say properly rated because how many times have you gone to grab a Sharpie at work or something and use it and someone has basically smashed the shit out of the tip of it? The worst. So where that was going to be my answer. <laughs> And it's it like the it's feeling like of rage up. you get when you open a Sharpie to use it and it's just smashed to hell. And it's, who's, who does that though? That's right, the worst part. It's like, who's doing this? And, and it would Neanderthals be, out there fucking <laughs> smashing it down and writing like this. It's a dolly. There's nothing yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for, yeah. And then you go to write a number and it's just blobs. You know, you go to write the number or the name and you exactly. can't read it. It's just blobs. Yeah. Yep. Infuriating. That's my only problem with it is that it's it's too good when you open a fresh sharp sharpie, mm. and it's too soul crushing when you open a dully, <laughs> which right. sounds like an yeah, Australian yeah. term. <laughs> like, yeah, down here we have dullies. Almost like the dunny. Yeah, exactly. That's what we call the toilet, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, was that all three? That's all three. Yeah. So, Steve. Thanks for coming on the show. That's all right, guys. Thanks for having me. It's a real privilege. Seriously, I've been watching you guys for a long time, and you guys have taught me a lot. It might not seem like much, but you have. But not just you. Like obviously, everyone that comes on, everything, shop hacks, everything, like full self-taught here. So everything you see behind me, you know, you guys have been a part of. So thanks, man. Thank you. Genuinely, you thank you. Yeah, it's been no. uh, it's been heaps of fun. Mm-hmm. Heaps like of that. fun. <laughs> that was well, a nice go, one. Go home, go to bed, and we're gonna start mm-hmm. our day. Yeah, definitely. Have a good day, guys. Thanks <laughs> for having me on. See you, See man. you guys.